Hey, Brother Globy. All right, it's, it's 12 o'clock. I pray every, everyone is doing well. Um, thanks for calling in. Thank you for uh, watching today. Um, I want to talk today about the church, about prayer, uh, because I, I believe that we need to stay focused as it pertains to serving God, trusting God, depending on God, uh, that uh, we know that God will see us, will see us through. Um, um, uh, Reverend Rouse, yeah. will you lead us in prayer, please? Out, I think it's important to point out 
that the church isn't the church isn't a building, but the church are the people. All right, the church isn't the building, but the church are the people. And I always seem to come back to this point that seemingly people we can treat the building and mortar better than we treat people sometimes. And it never should be that way. Also, because we are the called out ones, it means that we are the church whether or not we are in the building. The building does not make the church. The people make And we should treat each other as God's property is what we is what we ought to do. And if you would really look back um, to what Ecclesia or Ecclesia uh, really uh, comes from with that, that from, it comes from the fact that in biblical type of days they had somebody called a town crier. They had a town and whenever they wanted to have a meeting, whenever they would have a meeting, the town crier would announce the meeting. He would cry out and let the people know when the meeting would be. And that's really the uh, etymological meaning of that word. It's, it's a meeting. Okay? And it's a meeting where the called out ones assemble. Okay? We assemble come to the meeting. Okay? He is the town crier. He, he announces the meeting. The people respond. And that's really where that word, that word comes from. Now I think too it's important to know that the one who calls us to meet, the one who calls us to worship, we who are AMEs, we have it in our order of service. We have something called the call to worship. It's a part of our, it's a part of our worship service. It's called the call to worship, okay? And that's usually when the pastor or someone may be assigned and they would read together what we call the call to worship. But in a real sense, the one who calls us to worship isn't the pastor or isn't a steward, minister, trustee, missionary. They are not the ones who call us to worship. The one who calls us to worship is God himself. God is the one who calls us to worship. That's why it really makes no sense when people get mad at the church that they stop going to church. They stop going to a particular church. Well, when God calls us to worship, it's our duty to obey the call. Our, our, our job is to obey, to respond to God calling us to worship. All right? So, so whether you, when you go to church, ought not matter. It ought not matter. I'm, I'm glad that most of you have a church home, you have a pastor. That's great. That's wonderful. Uh, but but you ought to be worshiping somewhere. You ought to be somewhere. You know, now it's that we worship at home because of circumstances. All right. But but now there really isn't much excuse not to worship somewhere because there, there, there's YouTube, there's live stream, there's conference call, there's Zoom. There, there are all kinds of avenues where we can worship God together, but always know that it isn't a person who calls us to worship, it is God who calls us to worship. And when we look at the word worship, 
it would be important to understand that that word comes from an old English word, an old English word, and it really is translated worthship, W-O-R-T-H, worthship, meaning that God, when we look at God, when we understand God, when we love God, we know God is worth our time. He's worth our gifts. And he's worth our money. I sometimes use a cute word, finances, but really we're talking about money. All of us understand we're talking about money, okay? He is worth me giving him my time. I, I don't understand how uh, we can do whatever we want for uh, six days in a week and two days out of that week we have an hour for Bible study and we have uh, now worship, I can talk about New St. John, we start at 11, about 12 noon, 12, 12, we out of there, we, we're, we're done with worship, we've gone through the order of service, uh, we, we've had the word, we've prayed, we've sung, and then in an hour, hour, 10, 15 minutes, we done. And I don't understand, I really don't understand how we can't give God, how we complain about time as it pertains uh, to God. Not only should we give God our time, but we should give God back his gifts. God has gifted us. God has given us gifts and some use, some use talents. God has given us gifts and talents. And we are to use what God has given us. Okay? Look, we are not the ones who have gifted ourselves. It belongs to God. And God is calling us to be stewards over what he has given us. So we are to be stewards over time. We are to be stewards over the gifts that he gives us. And we are to be stewards over the money that God entrusts to us. Amen. Uh, time, gifts, and money. That word, that word steward is a, is a good word. We are stewards. Now, in, in our church, in the AME church, we have stewards, okay? Uh, the word steward, for me, uh, maybe a better word is manager. He, he calls us to be steward over, manager over what he has what he has entrusted to us. God gives it to you and he trusts that what he has given to you, you are going to use to honor his name. It's not yours, it's his. Time is not yours, it's his. The gift is not yours, it's his. The money is not yours, it's his. And what God does, he entrusted us with it. Understand that when God placed Adam in the garden, Adam was steward over the garden. He was entrusted to take care of the garden. That, that's where that word comes from, manager, steward. He was the one who was entrusted over the garden. So God is worthy of our worship, he's worthy of our time, he's worthy of our gifts, and he is worthy of our money, all right? And when we look at church, again, church isn't about even denomination, okay? Um, it, I, look, I, I don't preach denomination. I, I remember when I first got saved, there will always be these debates these arguments over 
denomination. Well, I, I, look, look, we serve, we worship Jesus and him crucified. Doesn't matter the denomination. Uh, my children, I, I really don't care what denomination they belong to as long as they are in a church that preaches Jesus Christ and him crucified. That, 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 that's all I'm concerned about. The, the crucifixion, resurrection, ascension, and second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that's really all I'm concerned about. You know, some, some would love for their children just to be in the same church. Well, that doesn't always happen that way. It would be good if it did, but it doesn't always happen that way. I'm the only one in my family who's a and &E. My, my sister, my mom, my, my mother and father, my sisters, uh, they were they were holiness. They act like Pentecostal folk. I'm the only one uh, that was in the AME, uh, the AME church. And and that that was a lesson to me. And and the reason I, I'm in the AME church, it just so happens that's the church where I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, and that's the church I was in. I loved the church. I, I grew in the church. I accepted my call in the church, and that's why I may have been. I didn't, I didn't know anything about the history, even though it is a rich history. really didn't know much about the history, uh, but it just so happens that I accepted the Lord, fell in love with the Lord in the AME church. One of the things that we are always be mindful of, uh, that all of our churches, no matter what church you belong to, God wants every church, and I think this is, this is important, and this is a reminder to us. This is a reminder that God wants every church to be a strong church. God wants it to be a strong church. Every church should be, should be, oh, that's bad. A strong church, all right? God wants every church to be a strong church. Every church should be a healthy church, okay? A healthy church. Now, healthy doesn't mean that you're perfect, but healthy means that the word is going forth. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, healthy means that there's a uh, prayer warriors in the church. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Healthy means uh, that people are being, uh, and I think this is really important, people are being made, made disciples. Made dis disciple making should be taking place in a healthy church. People ought to be growing. That's why I believe, I thank God for so many of you who tune in and those who call in. That's why I believe that one of the most important um, strong uh, um, that go on in the church is Bible study. Every believer ought to be a Bible study believer. You shouldn't be able to quote, you may not be able to quote from Genesis to Re Revelation, but you ought to be able to quote some scripture. You ought to be able to find where some scriptures are, all right? But, but all of us are, are to be disciples. And that makes the difference between a weak church and a strong church, making disciples. You see, when you, you can be a member of a church, but that doesn't mean that you are, are, are a disciple. Uh, maybe a disciple means that now you are learning some things. You are learning things, okay? You are, you are developing. You are developing. Uh, the reason I spend so much time with Bible study because it is my responsibility to make sure you are learning. It is my responsibility to, to see that you are developing. You should not be today where you were when you got saved. You should be further along than that. You should, you should have learned some things. You should have developed in some ways. 
since you've been saved, since you've grown. And, and, and you shouldn't be uh, uh, tripping over some of the same things you tripped over 10, 20 years ago. At some point, you should be getting, you should be getting stronger. You should be getting stronger in your walk with God. I, I take that very seriously. That's why, I, I mean, I, I, as best I can, I'm faithful to Bible study. And I'll tell you something else that I, I was faithful to before uh, we had to come home. I was faithful to Sunday school. Because wherever the word was being shared, I like to be there. I like to be there. I'll tell you something else. Every officer, every leader, if you call yourself an officer, and if you call yourself a leader, you should find yourself in Bible study and Sunday school. Every officer, every leader, you ought to find yourself in Bible and Sunday school. It goes back to understanding that it's not my time, but it's God's time. And because it's God's time, I get up in the morning. I know this is the day that the Lord has made. I get up in the morning and I go to, to Sunday school and I, and I go to Bible study. And thank so many of you who have tuned in today. Uh, but there has to be a study of the word of the Lord because that makes for a strong church, that makes for a healthy church, but also the church should be effective. The church should be effective. That, that, that we, we ought to impact some things. We ought to impact people's lives. We ought to be impacting people's lives. Changing lives. And how do we change lives? Showing the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus changes lives. It really does. When people join a church, when people come to a church, they're looking for loving people. Amen. They're looking for people who love God, and they're looking for people who will love them. We don't know where people are coming from. We don't know what their backgrounds are. We don't know what hurts they've had. And sometimes people just need to be shown love. Amen. And listen, that's not people, new members to the church, but that's that's all members of the church need to be shown love. Amen. They really do. I do. Show me some love every now and then. Just don't tell me of the problems. Just don't tell me what I'm doing wrong. But you can tell me what you enjoy, what uh, how you have learned some things. Uh, as a result of my being in your life, it should be a give and take. It shouldn't be all. Uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be all love and no criticism, and it shouldn't be all criticism and no love. It ought to be a balance there because we want to be an effective church, and people know when they are loved. People, I, I know, you know when you are loved. You know in your church when you are loved. And you know, there are always people in the church, and I, I hate to use this word, more special than others, who there are always people in the church, I believe God plants them there, who don't have a problem showing others love. They just gravitate to people. They are like magnets to people. And they just have that gift, that knack of just showing people love. And I believe that when we show the love of Jesus and when we preach Jesus, when we teach Jesus, when we make disciples and people are growing, uh, then I believe that's an effective church. 
Listen, you say, John, we can't consider ourselves to be effective and there is no growth taking place. We can't consider ourselves effective uh, if there is no love there. We, we ought to love one another. We ought to love each other. But what else the church ought to be? It ought to be a relevant church. It ought to be relevant. Okay, look at what's going on in the world right now. I, I talked to a former member of mine, and she asked me, uh, um, she asked me, what do you think you're trying to say to us through this? And I was able to tell her what, I, what I'm telling you. Listen, it is good that we protest. I, 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 I think the protesters are brave souls. I really do. I see them out there, and they're standing up for us. I think that is tremendous. I think that's great. Uh, for the injustices that are going on, that black men should not should not lose their lives over the things that they have lost their lives over. Um, uh, that should never happen. And, and uh, with the pandemic going on, um, that we are still shut up. And uh, now that some states are relaxing the the, the rules, how there are some spikes. Some places, and and uh, when when I called her, uh, she texted me and Gloria and just talked about how much uh, she missed us. And I didn't text back. I called her because uh, that her and her husband were just tremendous members. And she asked me, "What do you think God is saying?" And I said to her, "I believe God is trying to get our attention, and I still believe God is trying to get our." attention. Listen, protest without prayer ain't going to work. They're, they're, we, can't, we can't put God off of the equation believing that it will work. This country needs protest, yes, but more than protest, this country needs God. Amen. God is still relevant. And we try to, we, we, look, unless the Lord builds the house, they that labor build it in vain. Listen, we can change laws all we want, protest all we want to. What we need is for God to do what? Change some hearts. We need God to change some minds. And if, I mean, just think about it, and I press upon y'all, this is a little sidebar here, if you are not registered to vote, you need to do that today. You need to vote. Listen, don't tell me how sane you are and then you're not registered to vote. No, you need to get out there and you need to register to vote and you need to vote because that fella in the White House needs to go. Something, there. something is wrong. And listen, listen. And I've said this before. I've said this before. Listen, it starts at the head. If the head isn't right of anything, if the head isn't right in a family, that family is going to suffer. If the head isn't right in a business, that business will suffer. And if the the head isn't right of the country, then look at what the country is going through. I still believe, and again, God bless those who are protesting. We're praying for bereaved families. Look at how many people have died because of the pandemic. We have over 115,000 who have died because of the pandemic. Uh, we have family members who have lost loved ones in the streets. Listen, we need to pray. We need to turn our hearts and our minds back to God. God is still the answer. Listen, I, I listen to a whole lot of people who are smarter than I am, okay? But the, the one thing I'm smart enough to know is that God is the one who turn things around for us 
and thank God I don't know about any of you. I'm so glad I know God today. I'm so glad that God is in charge of my life. I am so glad that with going on, I can still stand and say, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I, I have, listen, I, 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 I'm still eating. I still have a roof over my head. I still can put gas in my car. I still have clothes on my back. I haven't skipped a beat. And some of you haven't skipped a beat either. And because you haven't skipped a beat, you ought to praise God from whom all blessings flow. We want to be a relevant church. All right? And so we look, we watch. Listen, I need to, I need to turn be honest with you. I don't need to watch MSNBC as much as I do uh, because I, I declare that sometimes it makes my blood pressure go up. I just get mad at the television. I'm talking to the TV like the TV can talk back to me. And I'm shaking my head at the television like, uh, like, uh, like people talk and can see me shaking my head when in reality uh, I look at it because you have to stay informed. There's a part that you need to know what's going on in the world. I get that. Uh, but if you keep watching it, it has the tendency to overwhelm you. It will really just get to be too much. So we need to always remember uh, that God, listen, God is Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and he is the end and he is everything in between. Amen. To turn our hearts and minds back to God, and the one thing I need—I I, I think we need to do some things as the church. And, and let me point out just a few right now. I think there are some things that the church is responsible for. Uh, so let me talk about just a few of those things right now. I am a big proponent of the Holy Spirit, and I've been reading a book. And the author makes the thought that we shouldn't call the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit. He makes the point that we should say Holy Spirit. We don't say the God. We don't say the Jesus. We, we just say, we say God, we say Jesus. Uh, and Holy Spirit is the third part of the Godhead. And I am a big proponent of teaching the ministry of Holy Spirit. And I believe that we need him, we need him more than ever. Ministry of Holy Spirit. Okay? Uh, if y'all on the phone to hear me pause, it's because I'm writing it down for those who are watching my Facebook Live, okay? Ministry of Holy Spirit. And some of you have heard me teach about Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, we know uh, that the Greek word is paraclete, okay? The Greek word is paraclete, and it means one who comes, one who comes alongside to help. One who comes alongside to help. Now I have, a, I have another former member, and and she's just having some some struggles, or some 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 struggles walking right now, along with my along with my mother. Okay, uh, my mother is still trusting God that she's going to walk. And recently she asked me, "Are you still praying that you need to walk?" Okay, and. Uh, the uh, Holy Spirit is the one who comes alongside to help. He is our, he is our, he is our helper. He is our helper, okay? And because he is our helper, we should believe that God can do anything that God wants to do, that God has the power to do. And we ought to believe what? That he is still what? A miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He is the one who comes alongside us. It is through the Holy Spirit.
that he puts in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit is what we say. He puts in your spirit the ability to believe that miracles are possible. Amen, ceiling. He, he puts in our hearts and minds that he can still help us in our infirmities. In fact, it is Holy Spirit who helps us to pray. I'm trying to get but it's the Holy Spirit who helps us to pray. Because the Bible says that we don't pray for things that we ought. The problem we have sometimes, sometimes, the problem we have is that we tend sometimes selfish prayers. Selfish prayers, okay? Selfish prayers mean that we're not really praying that God will do in our life what His will is, but there's some things we just want God to do because we want God to do it. It's it's my desire. It, what, what is my want? It's what I want, okay? But with Holy Spirit, He helps us to understand the difference between my will. And God's will. There's a difference between my will and God's will. And we are always remember that Jesus in the garden, when he was afraid about to go to the cross, the Bible says that he prayed the prayer, not my will, but thy will be done. Isn't that what the Lord said? So we are always praying God's will. Okay, and here's, here's the key, that when I pray in the will of God, God will make that come to pass. When I pray what's in the will of God, he will make that come to pass. Here's the trick. There are some things you are afraid to pray for that's in the will of God, but you're just too scared to pray for it. And that's how the Spirit, that's why Holy Spirit helps us to pray. He helps us to understand the mind of God, that communication between us and God. There's, there's communication now. God talks, I talk to him. Sometimes I just need to be quiet and listen for the voice of God. Now, I've never heard God, God's voice audibly, but there are some times I have I felt the unction. I've heard a tugging. I've heard God nudge me towards something. For that to happen, I, I tell the story, I tell the story, and, and I know I've told it before. Let me tell it again, just to make the point. I tell the story that Marissa uh, was, uh, we, were li we were living uh, in Charlotte. And Marissa was in Baltimore, and her car went up. And of course, uh, when when uh, uh, the baby girl's car goes up, you know, Daddy's trying to do everything he can to help. And uh, me and Gloria went out, and we uh, started looking around, and went to this one place uh, that said, uh, "Credit is not an issue. We will finance anybody." Uh, and a hundred percent we'll finance the car. We were there looking at different cars and um, this is the truth and I, I don't always claim this, I can't always claim this, but this happened. In the middle of trying to find that car for Marissa, I heard the Spirit say to me, wait, just wait, just like that, just wait. When, when I heard him say, just wait, I said to Gloria, let's go. And walked off the lot without the car, didn't know why we needed to wait, but walked off the lot, went back home. And Marissa went to a car dealership, and guess what? They, they financed her a car that, well, Daddy had to co-sign for it. 
but at least she had a car, and it was a brand new car. Wasn't a used car, didn't come with other people's problems, but it was a new car. And she was able to get that. But if I had done what I wanted to do, it would have just messed some things up. And some of us know, some of us know, the problem we've had in life is when we've done what we wanted to do. It wasn't God telling us to do it. It was us telling us that's what we wanted. And then when we got in trouble, then we ran back to God and asked God to get us up out of this trouble. And many of us know, and I, I, must, I must confess, I prayed this prayer myself. Many of us know that we prayed that prayer, Lord, if you just this time, I'll never do that again. And many times it could have been prevented if we had only Follow Holy Spirit's leading. It is that God talks with us. He does. He talks with us. He talks with us. He, he, he was given as our helper. And I believe that every church should understand the ministry of Holy Spirit. I think that church can be stronger. I think that church can be more effective. I believe that that church can really do the will of God if we would just if we would just uh, listen to the voice of Holy Spirit. One other uh, point that I want to make here, and I'll move on from here, is that many times I've heard people pray, Lord, come by here, or stop by for a little while. Um, and and I'm, I must admit, <clears throat> that's a little pet peeve of mine, okay, because the reality is that God doesn't have to come by anywhere. He's everywhere at the same time. Uh, he doesn't have to, Lord knows who wants him to stop by. I don't need God to stop by. I need him to keep being by me. I need him every hour of every day. I don't need him to stop by. And Sunday morning worship, Lord knows we don't want him to stop by. He ain't some kind of visitor, okay? He, he, he is the person who's leading worship. He is the person who's blessing us in worship. So we don't want him just to stop. So, so are there some Sundays we tell him to stop by and other Sundays we don't want him to stop by? No, we don't pray that prayer. We understand that God is everywhere at the same time. Why, when it comes to preaching, personally, this is what I feel. When it comes to preaching, um, um, I, I believe that I can pull a sermon out just about anywhere. It doesn't matter to me. I believe that because I have Holy Spirit in me who leads me and guides me, who, who has put some word in me that I can expound on that word because he's given me the gift of being able to expound on Word of God. So let's not talk about God stopping by and uh, come by. No, He's all. He's already with us. Listen, when you showed up, God showed up because of the body of Christ. So all of us should understand uh, that Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. He helps us. He leads us. He guides us. He will help us uh, to pray, all right? What else I believe that a strong church should be about, I believe that um, every strong church should be a, and I, I a little earlier, every strong church should be a word-loving church. You, you have to learn the word. You, you, you have to be a study, a study the word, study to show thyself approved. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Every strong church is a word studying church. But not only should we be a word loving church, we should be a word practicing church. 
we should, you've heard it, we should practice what we preach. We should practice what we witness. Know that people watch us. People are looking at us. People know you go to church. Lord knows they know you go to church. They see the big Bible you carry. Well, we don't carry big Bibles anymore. But we see big crosses we wear. So people know we go to church, all right? And it doesn't take much for us to say praise God. So people know we in church, but we should be a word-loving, word-practicing church. Faith without works is dead. It's not that works save you. I don't work to be saved. I work because I am saved. And we need to make that very, very clear. I don't work to be saved. I work because I'm saved. And that brings me to another point. That brings me to another point. When you work for God, no matter what goes on around you, it doesn't stop you from working for, for God. I think that's important. You don't work for God when everything is going good. For God, whether things are going well or when things are not going well. Because that's what you are called to do. Amen. Listen, if I stop preaching every time somebody made me mad, Lord knows, I don't, I don't know what I'd do. There's some Sundays I probably wouldn't preach. I'd probably ask somebody else to preach, me the guest preacher, because I'm mad about what somebody said. No, I don't, I don't throw in the towel because everything is going well. Listen, you, 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 you serve in spite of what you're going through. Amen. You serve anyhow. You can't let people stop you from serving God. You didn't join the choir for people. Don't get off the choir because of people. Don't join the church because of people. Don't leave because of people. Hang in there with God. Nothing is ever 100% hunky-dory. Nothing is 100% all is well. Nothing. Everything comes with struggle. I, I'll make this point. Listen, if you go out and drink, or when you went out to the, to the club and somebody made you mad, you, you were mad, but you went to the club the next week. You didn't stop because somebody made you mad. So I don't know why it is of Jesus Christ, when people make us mad, uh, we determine, well, I ain't going back there no more because somebody made me flip. Somebody will make you mad everywhere you go. So you got to serve God because God first loved you, because God saved you. And you work because He saved you. He brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Amen. We have to be a word-loving church. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Listen to what the word of God says. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will last forever. That's what God says about his word. Amen. We should love the word. We should study the word. We should be doers of the word of God. Amen. And, and listen, the one thing always understand, and y'all heard me say this over and over again, the one thing the devil doesn't want the saint to do, the believer to do, is to get a word from the Lord. He, he will try to frustrate you. He'll do everything he can to get you to stop going to church. He'll do everything he can uh, to, to, to have you not come to Bible study or to worship on Sunday morning. He'll try to discourage you because the one thing he will always try to frustrate you is when it comes to getting a word from the Lord. 
And every time preaching goes on, your ears ought to perk up, your expectation ought to perk up. You should be in more anticipation when the word is being preached because God has it that in his word, he can change your mind. He can change your situation if you just get a word from the Lord. That's why even now, even now, I take certain preachers off television and I refer back to them. I like a, a Bishop Patterson. I still listen to Bishop Patterson on Sunday because I'm just inspired by the word. I still tune in to T.D. Jakes because every now and then I can get something that will help me in my walk with the Lord. But look, don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil fool you. He'll do all kinds of stuff to make you turn away from loving a word from God. Don't let him trick you. Always know that your deliverance, your change comes when you submit yourself under the authority of a pastor and you get a word from the Lord. Amen. Well, the third thing that I believe every effective church uh, should, uh, a strong, effective, healthy, relevant church uh, ought to be committed to, to prayer. And that's what I was trying to, trying to get to. Every strong, effective, healthy, relevant church should be committed to prayer. Last Friday morning, we had prayer uh, from 8 to 8.15. Not a long time, 15 minutes. We had prayer, and we were blessed by those 15 minutes of prayer. Just, just set aside that time uh, to come to talk, because prayer is, very simply, Let's not make it complicated. Prayer is what? Talking to God. Talking to God. I like also to say prayer is communi communication. Communication with God. I like communication with God better because prayer isn't us doing all the talking. Prayer is a give and take. I listen to God, God listens to me. God speaks back to me, I speak back to God. It's communication, it's dialogue. It's dialogue with God. It's two ways, back and forth. Amen. And you ought to create that dialogue. The church should have that dialogue with with God. Lord knows we need that that we need that more than ever now. We need to make sure that the communication between us and God is clear. Because I believe God is talking to us. I believe God wants to talk to us. And we ought always remember that there is what? Power in prayer. You know, we say that. We make them cliches. We, we make them cliches. But they're true. Prayer what? Changes things. Prayer changes things. And prayer changes situations. Okay? Prayer changes things. And prayer changes situations. Listen to what the Bible says. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I said this Sunday, I'll say it again. Little prayer, little power. Some prayer, some power. Much prayer, much power. Okay? The more you pray, the more power you will feel. The more reassurance you will have. The more trust in God you will receive. But it takes a prayer life. That's a good one. You ought to have what? 
a prayer life. It ought to be a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's not hit or miss. When I was a babe in Christ, I must admit, it was hit or miss. If I was in trouble, I'd pray. If I wasn't in trouble, I wouldn't pray as hard. Okay? Um, but doesn't trouble make you pray a little bit harder? When you're in a jam, you'll, you'll pray a little bit harder then. Okay? It's a lifestyle. Every believer ought to have a prayer life. Okay? I like the verse in Isaiah. Isaiah 65 and 24. Mark that, mark that scripture down. Mark that scripture down. Isaiah 65 and 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And listen to this. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Imagine that. That today you have a need. And you haven't called yet. But God has almost in Isaiah saying, before you even call, I'm already answering. And while you are yet speaking, God says, I will hear. That's a great reassurance to all of us. And there are other examples of effective prayer. We know that Daniel prayed. Even when he threatened to be thrown in a lion's den, the Bible says that when he saw that the writing, the law was signed, that Daniel went into his house, opened his window toward Jerusalem, and still prayed three times a day. Daniel even threatened to be thrown in the lion's den. The Bible says they threw him in, even though the king, even though the king knew he had been tricked about throwing Daniel in. The next morning, here comes the king, word comes to the lion's den and says, Oh, Daniel, has your God delivered you? And Daniel says, Oh, king, live forever. My God has sent an angel, and that angel has shut the mouth of the lions. That's what prayer will do. Prayer will shut lions' mouths. And whatever you're going through, effective prayer will help you to get through it. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. In the minute that I have left, I, I, want, I want you to start a journal. And I want you to write in that journal something you've been praying to God for. Something you need from God. Something you need God to do life of a loved one. I need you to start that journal today. Write down what you need God to do. As you're writing, I, I need you to write it in faith. Because I know in your mind the devil will say to you, I don't know why you're writing that down. You know God ain't going to do it. But I need you by faith to write that thing down. And believe God as you're writing that God can do it. Put the date on it. <laughs> Put the date on it when you ask God to do it. And I'm believing with you today. I'm believing with you through the phone, through Facebook Live. I'm believing with you today that that thing that you're trusting God to do, God's going to do it for you. Mark the date down. And when God does it, we're going to mark the date when God did it. I'm believing God today. I, I believe that what we need is supernatural faith today. And God can grant you that today. Supernatural faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We touch and agree right now in Jesus' name. And we believe it to already be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, I want to thank you for 
uh, tuning in today. Thank you for calling on the, on the conference call. Thank you for those who are watching Facebook Live. I appreciate you. I remember that uh, we're having a, um, a church conference two weeks from yesterday. <laughs> two weeks from yesterday. Uh, you will, you'll be receiving a, a um, email letting you know Sent all of it, letting you know that we're going to have that meeting. Amen. I want to report that Gloria did go back to the doctor yesterday, and all is well. Amen. Everything looked good. Uh, she's on the men. Uh, we went back, we went up, Monday came back yesterday. Both of us are tired. Amen. Uh, but we thank God for this time that we can share for you. Thank you for all of your prayers. Thank you for your love that you have shown us. Uh, during this time. Hi to everybody. Hi to the members of New St. John. Hi to all of my member, members, quote, former members. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. My family watching. God bless you today. Glad that you, glad that you tuned in. Are there any questions before we close in prayer? Any questions? I have one question. Yes, sir. I, and you said that God is the one who turned things around. Correct. Okay. The thing that you don't know what I mean is that you see, America has been covered up as problems for so long. Yes. And that you know, yes. in order for God to turn this thing around, you know, we can march. Yes. Sunday morning.